Nikunj, just if we had to look at it, I know you're talking about riding the wave, but if one had to look at the broader markets, individual indices, where is it that they would should be comfortable parking money? Uh, <clears throat> Avan, I think you will actually see a broad-based uh, rally, a uh, broad-based participation. Uh, I've said this before, I'll say it again. Markets at an all-time high, but sentiment and participation is not at an all-time high. The market rally or the market comeback in the month of April has surprised and delighted everyone. And when markets are at an all-time high, when prices are going higher and participation is low, now whether you call it FOMO, whether you call it Johnny Come Lately crowd, that crowd would be desperate to kick in. You, you could have made a case that, okay, you know, this is a dangerous time to buy into the market, but you want to refrain from doing that because of technical factors, because of the earning push we are getting, and the way the global setup is. Globally, the Fed has, we've come on the right side of the Fed event. B, GST data or the earning calendar so far is indicating that Indian economy is chugging along very well. C, geopolitical concerns are not there. And fourth, which is the technical factor, which was the irritant in the month of April, when foreign institutional investors were net sellers, I think that also has turned, uh, you know, that also has turned slightly favorable. So I don't see any concern on the horizon which will shape shape the apple cart so best strategy in this market is if you're long you stay long if you're bullish stay bullish in terms of themes and rotation uh, very difficult to point out one particular sector because i think the market in a sense are likely to we could see a very broader market participation and i think a lot of catch up will happen in underperforming mid and small cap stocks mm -hmm. so you don't want to be you don't want to do anything different you just want to say, okay, I will take, I'm talking about near term, I will take a fresh guard only after the election verdict. And you should take a fresh guard after that. But that's like a one month away. Mm -hmm. And the political na narrative, you know, what will happen, uh, all that narrative I think will only start once the sixth or the seventh round is over. That's the time markets would be, you know, all the grape wine about things would start. So I think we are at least two weeks away from that. So in the next two weeks, I don't see any concerns on the horizon. I mean, the only concern was Fed, which is okay. Geopolitics, that's sorted. FI selling, that also seems so to be diminishing. So bears have little edge right yeah. now. Absolutely. Well, talk about stocks and finally some respite. Bajaj Finance and the RBI has lifted the curbs on their loan products. Uh, E-commerce, Insta EMI card will now resume sanction. Disbursal of loans as well is going to happen. And uh, yeah, finally some respite coming in and uh, I mean, you know, brokerages obviously are liking this, saying that the lifting of these restrictions is a big overhang getting lifted and finally you will see some respite. So you could take the clock back. I think the news of this RBI, uh, you know, assessment or RBI ban actually came in middle of November and it's just been six months and Bajaj Finance has been able to uh, fulfill all the regulatory requirements and for me that is quick and for me that is encouraging which means that uh, they were able to convince Reserve Bank of India and the ban is removed now so that clearly means that they've been able to fix their house and they've done it very swiftly a lot of other very prominent franchise when they've had regulatory or you know regulatory challenges it has taken them over a year to really come on the uh, right side of the regulator. So for me, that is the headline that they've acted swiftly and they've come on the right side. Now let's lo look at the impact. When the news came in November, the consensus view that it would it would have affected the full year numbers by about four to five percent. Now this entire overhang has only lasted for six months. FY twenty four numbers over, but the fact that this ban, this RBI uh, restriction has gone away. How will that really change the near-term earnings? I think the estimate for this quarter is unlikely to change in a meaningful manner. But for the full year, you would imagine that there could be a 2 to 3% upside. Bajaj Finance stock had fallen post numbers because markets were not very happy with the guidance. So there would be some relief. But for but more than absolute, you know, Excel sheet analysis that, okay, it's going to be 2% or 3% at the PBT level, little more at the PAT level. For me, what is important here is that if I compare, let's say, other private banks, you've got into similar kind of scrutiny from Reserve Bank of India, it has taken them years to come out. Bajaj Finance has managed to do that in just two quarters. And that is that you've been able to fix the house. 
with RBI, which is very stringent regulator, okay. in just about 180 days. Oh, I mean, yeah. Kudos. Absolutely. In fact, uh, Shweta Daptadar as well joins in from Ilara Securities. Shweta, hi, morning. That's the surprise factor, right? That it took Bajaj Finance just five and a half months to, you know, sort everything out and comply with the RBI regulations. A big positive and a big overhang lifting on Bajaj Finance, you think? Yeah, I agree. Uh, so it's a big positive coming for Bajaj Finance. And as you rightly pointed out, in less than six months time frame, so it was uh, in November 15, 2023, that RBI had directed Bajaj Finance to hold a loan under e-com and Insta EMI cards. And uh, if you understand these products better, then EMI cards have allowed customers to actually shop on a flexible repayment tenure for purchases of consumer durable goods. And so has EMI card products, which have enabled online purchases on various e-commerce platforms. So this accounted for almost 27 to 30% of Bajaj's B2B sales, uh, sales financing business. So net-net, um, as you rightly pointed out, the impact which it had on PBT of around 4.5% by the end of FI24, now that sort of uh, uh, comes as a huge relief. So 42 lakh odd EMI card users which were impacted which led to even slower newer customer acquisition, even uh, that comes as a huge respite. And last but not the least, the biggest thing for investors to cheer is, uh, while it has taken over a year for other banks and a couple of lenders to sort of come out of this RBI forbearance, Bajaj Finance has addressed the issues in less than six months time frame. So yes, huge positive. Do you see the stock recouping whatever losses it had post numbers? So definitely, yes, as a positive sentiment on the stock valuation. Um, but apparently, there are a few other things which uh, the market will also sort of keenly monitor. One is the smooth transitioning of the management, which is underway. Second, the growth trajectory. So while the uh, lifting of regulatory embargo will definitely give a leg up to the EMI card and digital loans, the management guidance has apparently been trimmed over apprehensions in the rural and consumer financing across both urban as well as rural portfolios. So that will be closely monitored. Nonetheless, the growth for Q4 or FI24 was largely led by mortgages and wholesale lending alongside SMEs. So growth is one which uh, definitely will be watched out for and the management transition that investors are keenly watching. Thanks very much, Sony, for highlighting. Uh, uh, sorry, thanks very much uh, for uh, taking time out, Shweta, and highlighting those details as to what the implications are for Bajaj Finance. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.